In this video I want to talk about the RGB mixer in DaVinci Resolve. It's one of the most powerful tools for creative color work and also one of the most overlooked. Why? Because it's hard to use. The sliders feel unpredictable and you never quite know what results you get. That's why I built something better, a custom detail that uses the same math behind the RGB mixer but with clearer names, more intuitive controls and some extra features to make it more user-friendly. So let's get started. Here for example I have some red footage and a very simple note tree setup. In the end we are going from red to rec 709. Then I made a small exposure adjustment and increased the contrast a bit. Now we can see here in the trace in the vector scope that we have a very narrow oval and very little separation between the basketball and the skin tones. When I use the qualifier, we can see that the basketball is in this area and the skin tones are also in a similar area, so it's all very close together. If I want to stretch that out, I can use the RGB mixer and it's actually quite easy. I just select the RGB mixer, then click on Auto Normalize then I raise the green level. If we now look at the trace in the vector scope, we can see that the colors are being pulled apart. And now there is more separation between the basketball and the skin tones. Now I toggle the node on and off. Before and after. Before and after. Here's another example. In this footage I want the reds to have a deeper tone and the blues in the sky to be a little bit brighter. And the RGB mixer can be very useful for doing that. I change the composite mode to luminosity. Now I check which slider I need to adjust. That already looks pretty good. This is what the image looked like before and now after. So without the RGB mixer and now with it. As you can see the result is very clear and clean. Next maybe we want to shift the red more towards magenta or orange and the RGB mixer can help with that too. I need to create a second node now and the composite is set to normal. I call this one RGB mixer 2. First I turn auto normalize back on and I'm not entirely sure which sliders I need. But we can see that, for example, using this slider pushes the red more towards yellow. And with this one, we can push the reds more towards magenta. But you can already tell, it's not very intuitive. I have to raise the red slider in the blue channel to shift the reds towards magenta. Or raise red in the green channel with auto normalize on to push red more towards yellow. And that's the problem with the RGB mixer. I rarely use it because it's hard to predict what's going to happen in the image. Which slider should I use to get more separation in the green magenta range? Or which one gives me more density? Which composite mode do I need? Or which slider do I have to push if I want to rotate the U? It can all be very confusing and because it's confusing the RGB mixer is used very rarely even though it's such a powerful tool. That's why I created a detail to simplify all of this. I'm going to turn this off now, reset the node and name it DZTL. In the FX library I select DZTL, then scroll down and select Mono RGB Mixer. It's organized like this. At the top we have three sliders to adjust density, then three sliders to adjust U. After that three sliders to adjust saturation and some extra sliders for saturation, subtractive saturation. We've got a deep saturation slider to exclude highlights from being affected. Then a global U-rotate slider, which can also be very helpful. And we can toggle between preserve luminance and non-preserve luminance mode. Usually you only have the on-off switch, but with this detail you can also set it to 0.5, which can be really useful. Now if I want to make red denser and blue brighter, I select the blue versus red density slider. If I also want to shift the red U more towards magenta, I use the red sign U slider. 
so that shifts along the red cyan axis. If I want to increase or reduce the saturation on the green magenta axis, this is also very easy. Now I go back to this image and reset it. This time I'm using the DSTL Mono RGB Mixer. I already know what I want. More saturation in magenta and green. So I go to the green magenta saturation slider and increase the value. And I see I get immediately more separation between the skin tones and the basketball. I don't have to think about what to do. It's much easier and much faster using a DZTL. And if I want to adjust red density again, then I use green versus red density or the blue versus red density slider. And the DZTL is great because it has everything built in. I can turn down saturation, increase subtractive saturation and rotate U. You can adjust the colors very quickly. Normally you need multiple nodes for all of this. First a regular RGB mixer, then a second one in luminosity mode. Then more for saturation, subtractive saturation and you rotate. You quickly end up with five nodes and have to jump back and forth between them. That takes a lot of time and that's exactly why the RGB mixer is so rarely used. Adjustments with the RGB mixer can shift the skin tones towards yellow and then you have to compensate this with global U adjustment. Constantly going back and forth between multiple nodes just takes time. I'll delete this now and with the DZTEL it's just more pleasant and faster to work. You get to your desired result quickly. I'll now demonstrate this again using a test image. Here we can clearly see what the RGB mixer is doing. With green versus red density, if I increase red density, green gets brighter or green gets darker and red becomes very bright. Blue shifts slightly too, but brightness remains. With blue versus red density, brightness in blue changes, blue gets darker, green barely changes. With green versus blue slider, brightness shifts between blue and green. Now we rotate the U. If I for example change this red and cyan U, red and cyan both shifts. Red moves right towards magenta, cyan also shifts. Blue as well, but it stays on the same line. Green doesn't move, as you can see, magenta and yellow also stay in place. The U doesn't rotate, only brightness does. Now I will lower the saturation a bit. If we now want to increase saturation on the green magenta axis, we can do that here. Green magenta saturation slider, just increase the value. Or we can increase or decrease saturation for red cyan or blue yellow. As you can see, everything is very smooth. I can move the sliders in all directions, the transitions are soft. I can also switch between preserved luminance and non preserved luminance. I hope this helps the RGB mixer gets used more often. You can quickly create great looks with it. The RGB mixer is brand new in the DZTL pack. I also improved the classic RGB crosstalk DZTL. Now it also includes the preserve luminance slider. We see there's no need to press the auto normalize button anymore. It's always on. When we increase green, blue automatically goes down. Or when we raise red, blue also drops. That's why there are only two sliders. Red and blue or green and blue. There's no need for a blue slider in the RGB crosstalk DZTL. I've explained this in more detail on my website. The RGB crosstalk also includes a normal saturation slider and a subtractive saturation slider, a deep set slider to exclude highlights from being affected and a global U-rotate slider. We can also completely switch the RGB crosstalk to luminosity mode. When I turn on luminosity mode, it's like setting the composite mode to luminosity. This also lets you adjust red brightness again, change density in different ways. As you can see, and like I mentioned, the results are very refined. There's a free demo version available on my website, so you can test it with your own footage. If you have any questions, please leave a comment or send me an email. That's it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and see you next time.